and welcome to my channel. My name is Karen Marie and today I thought I would give you a little update on things that have been going on <laughs> in my life and uh, I thought I would talk to you a little bit about how things are progressing with the So April Blouse 24 challenge. Um, so apologies for the bad lighting and everything. I know you can see the reflection <laughs> of um, my living room lights here today, um, but it is actually just a terrible day outside and it's so dark and gloomy that I need the lights on even though it's midday <laughs> in April. It's raining terribly and it's also quite windy so there might be some you know <laughs> sounds in the background but I, you know I'm hoping that it'll turn out okay anyway. So okay um, I thought I could start by showing you my latest make. I'm not sure that this is going to be put up as um, a part of the So April Blouse Challenge, but um, I finished making it, so I thought I could show it to you. And uh, this is it. This is the So House 7 Romy Gathered Top. It's also a dress pattern, um, but I have made the top, <laughs> obviously, so it's this is a blouse. I've made it in this really lightweight floaty viscose um, that my husband got me in um, Algeria when he went there for a business trip. And I'll just stand up so you can see what it looks like. So as you can see, it is very, very roomy. <laughs> it is quite floaty, you can't really see it there. Um, and I forgot to um, check the final measurements before I chose my size, always a bad idea. <laughs> but I actually quite like it the way it is too, that it is very roomy and oversized and floaty. This is a very lightweight whiskers and um, I think it's going to be good for the summer. So um, I'm not usually um, like a very big fan of like crew necks like this. Um, I think I suit more of like either boat necks or V necks better. Um, but I do, th I do sort of like the simplicity of this blouse and it came together really um, quickly. <laughs> so it's a very easy top and yeah, I think I'm going to, to wear it quite a lot this summer. I'll include more um, information about the pattern when I do my um, April makes roundup. <laughs> okay, so... Um, as you, uh, if you follow my channel, you've seen that I put up last week a video about 10 blouse patterns that I would like to make um, and hopefully some inspiration for the So April Blouse 24 challenge. And um, this one was one <laughs> of the suggestions that I made. One of the other suggestions was uh, the Nepheline blouse by Vivian Xiao Chen. And quite a few of you <laughs> um, uh, gave me some feedback on that and said that they would really like to see that blouse made up. And I bought the pattern. So yeah, I'm, I'm gluing those pages together this morning and I can't wait to, to start making it. And yesterday I had a couple of hours to kill while I was waiting for my daughter who attended a birthday party. And I went out to my local fabric shop um, to, to get a few bits and pieces. And that was also because my stock of viscoses was running really low. <laughs> so, and I wanted uh, to make the Nepheline blouse out of a viscose because it's quite voluminous and I didn't want something that would like really stick out <laughs> from the body. So I wanted a nice lightweight fluid viscose and my eyes caught this. <laughs> I have seen this fabric um, at her place before and I've always really liked it. I was not sure that this sort of, I don't know if it's sort of, I, it kind of is in between 
a grey and a light khaki, I think, the background um, of this. And I wasn't really sure that I could pull that off. I did do my best to sort of have my colour card <laughs> next to it and it looked quite similar to one of the colours so I decided to go for it because I really liked how the bright like colours popped um, against that background. And I also think that this is going to work really well for the Nephilim blouse. Um, but I'm really chuffed to be making this blouse and if it turns out well, then I'll be entering that into the challenge. So yeah, I'm really, really happy about this, um, this fabric. And yeah, it makes me happy just looking at it, which is always a good sign, isn't it? <laughs> um, I also picked up uh, another fabric. I love uh, Linen Viscose Blends. It's probably my favorite fabric to work with. Um, and I came across this um, fabric. Sorry, I've got it on the floor because it's still wet because <laughs> I've just washed it. So I haven't uh, ironed it or anything yet, but this is it. Now, this is a very untraditional fabric for me. Um, I don't know, normally go for something like with big flowers on it. That's probably upside down though. Or maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. Maybe it could be used anyway. Yeah, I think so. Um, and I have never really been a big fan of pink, but since I got my colors done, uh, it suggests a lot of pink colors. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, it's obvious that at least the color consultant um, thought that that was a very good color for me to wear. So I'm trying to be a little more adventurous and trying to be a little brave <laughs> and go for fabrics that I wouldn't normally go for. The other thing is that it's, um, that makes it a, <laughs> an untraditional a choice for me is that it's got big flowers on it. I don't tend to go for many like very floral fabrics. I have a few, um, but it's not something that I, um, as drawn to as like geometric prints or, or other kinds of prints. Um, and I'm always a little bit worried when I go for fabrics like with big floral prints that I will end up looking like a cushion cover on my granny's uh, couch. You know, that's, I know there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just not really the style I'm going for. I always think that I look older than I am <laughs> so I, I guess I'm not as into like these kinds of styles um, because I think it sort of ages me even more. Um, <laughs> that might all be in my head and I'm definitely not one of those who will go for um, you know desperately clinging to her youth or something <laughs> anything like that definitely not me. Uh, I'm perfectly comfortable being um, soon to turn 46. <laughs> perfectly comfortable with that, but I just sometimes feel that uh, fabrics with like huge flowers on it, it sort of ages me a little bit more and I'm not really going for that either. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm trying to sort of embrace new things and <laughs> new colors and trying to be a bit more adventurous so yeah that uh fabric is going to be the burda blouse that i shared in the video with the 10 blouse patterns i think that will show off the print because there are hardly any seam lines <laughs> uh so it's it's very basic it's the front and the back and a sleeve so it's not really anything um, too complicated. And I think that a nice linen viscose blouse in that pattern will do very nicely. Yeah. Okay, next. I also got um, a simple um, gingham cotton because my younger sister 
uh, contacted me the other day and uh, she sent me a direct message on Instagram and she shared a blouse that a Norwegian sewist had put on Instagram as a story. And it was sort of a replica of those very popular blouses where it's tied in the front all the way from the top to the bottom. And as I shared in the 10 blouse pattern um, inspiration video, I had thought about getting the paradise pattern plumeria. But then um, I had a second look at the video that my sister shared with me and it's not really quite the same. So I decided on being brave again <laughs> and uh, simply cutting sort of it out on a whim and um and i put a t-shirt pattern i, I put the t-shirt pattern the, the rear ringer that i've already made in her size so i have that traced out and i sort of put that pattern piece on top of the blouse to see uh, how it matched now obviously the rear ringer is um uh, made for a jersey um, but I thought if I made like a, a good seam allowance and compared it to the uh, blouse that I already have of hers, then I thought I might be able to, <laughs> to make that happen. So, and she wanted a red gingham um, and this is 100% uh, cotton and it is, it has some body to it, um, but it's not too thick. So I think that would make a good like gathered blouse um and still not be too like overwhelming <laughs> and poofy and i have to say i'm not good without a pattern i need a pattern i don't know how you do it with the sort of <laughs> hacking and things like that i'm not good at that so hopefully i will be at some point in my sewing journey but i'm not yet so that will be exciting to see if I completely botched that or if it's going to work. So yeah, um, I'm going to be sewing up the uh, blouse for my sister and then hopefully I'll get started on my Nepheline blouse. So that was it for the sort of update on the Sew April blouse challenge. Um, but uh, in other news, <laughs> I have um, ordered a few things. Uh, the Norwegian um, fabric store online called Stofflykke uh, had a sale the, a couple of weeks ago. And um, it was, I think, was it 15 or 20% off all fabrics? Maybe 15% off. And I thought that was a good opportunity um, to replenish some of my um, stash in, in the Jersey Fabrics Department. Um, and I got two gift certificates for Christmas for that online store. So I used one of them. <laughs> and I can't wait until that, um, that package arrives. It should arrive on Monday. Um, so yeah, I'm so looking forward to that. There, um, I bought uh, a really fun fabric that I've already, I've seen something similar on a German uh, fabric store called uh, Dresden Stoffen, uh, and they have such a lovely selection, but unfortunately they don't ship to Norway, probably because we're not a part of the EU, um, is what I'm saying to myself anyway, <laughs> that might be why they're not sending to Norway. But I managed to find uh, at Stofflykke, I found the um, a print that I really, really wanted. It has a sage green um, uh, background and it has zebras on it. And I don't really tend to go for that many novelty prints, but I just couldn't resist it because it's so adorable. <laughs> So I'm hoping that it will be as uh, lovely in, uh, you know, in real life as it was online. And I don't have any confirmed plans for that, but I am making um, a sweater for myself. <laughs> totally, you know, selfish. <laughs> so yeah, that is coming next week. Um, <laughs> And then it's the So Frugal uh, Challenge. 
I won two prizes. Yay! <laughs> so happy. <laughs> and um, one of the prizes I won was um, a free pattern from the amazing Adam from Adam Sews. Um, he is a person that many <laughs> in the sewing community know about. He makes these incredibly lovely, well-sewn and fun, like sewing caddies and uh, project bags and everything. He, he's located in the UK, um, but he also sells patterns. And those of us who were fortunate enough to have the Beyond the Pink Door advent calendar, we've already had one of his patterns. They were for sort of quilted mittens, which I found like such a fun idea. I haven't made those up yet, but I will. Um, but I won a free pattern and I ummed and ahed <laughs> between two of his bag patterns for like three days before I finally um, selected one. And it is a, sort of a crossbody bag um, that I really want to make <laughs> for the summer. So, you know, hoping to get that done. The other prize that I won was a haberdashery bundle from B&M Fabrics. Anyway, that was it for me. Have a lovely weekend and I'll see you later. Bye.